in a world full of speed. We lack patience. We want our packages now, our workout results now, our food right now. So today let's change that pace a little bit. So we're making the, the longest timed burrito that we can. What can we take a long time with? I, I wanna extrapolate it as much as possible. If there's a recipe that takes four hours, how do I make it take 12? So we're gonna separate out the elements, draw out as much time as we can, put it all together in one burrito, and well, see if the taste is even worth all that time and effort. With all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Believe it or not, this burrito actually has the capability of going beyond 200 hours. But I decided to take it easy on you because, well, I love you. If you want this to time out well, you must do this recipe in order. First thing, hot sauce. Only five ingredients if you don't count the Wawa. First, you need one pound or 450 grams of red Fresno chilies or red jalapenos. Slice those into rough rounds. Ideally, you want them evenly sized, but obviously you're going to eviscerate it in a blender, so, you know, whatever. Once they're sliced, place in a bowl. Toss with one tablespoon or 14 grams of kosher salt. Make sure those two measurements are as accurate as possible. This is at a 3% salt level. That means that took the weight of the peppers, aka 450 grams, multiplied that by 0 0.03, and I got 14 grams. This is the secret formula to a safe and proper ferment. Once your peppers are tossed, put them in a bag for vacuum sealer and well vacuum seal them and let that sit out at room temperature for seven days we have another hot sauce recipe that uses a submerged brine technique so you can do that sans vacuum machine we're now sitting already at 168 hours but wait we got another thing that if you don't do today will ruin everything preserved lemons do this the same day and i'll explain why in a second in a medium-sized bowl combine three quarters of a cup or 216 grams of kosher salt and three tablespoons or 36 grams of granulated sugar whisk those brothers together You'll need seven Meyer lemons, start by cutting off a small piece of each stem, then with a knife starting at the top or bottom of each lemon, cut them into quarters without cutting all the way through. You need to leave a little nub at the end to keep them attached. Repeat with all your lemons, then once that's done, fill your crevices with your salt sugar mixture. Whoa, Josh, that's so much! Yeah, that's right. You really want to fill these bad boys up. Don't worry about it being too salty. Once it's done, drop that into a one-quart mason jar and repeat that process, adding a light spoonful of your salt sugar mixture every so often until your jar is completely filled with your seasoned lemons. Use a dowel or rolling pin. Press those bad boys down you want their juices to create a brine that just covers the lemons so either add more lemons or you can squeeze more lemon juice in there once it covers top with a little extra salt sugar mix cover with cheesecloth and a piece of kitchen twine so the little creatures that live in your kitchen cannot hop in then leave that out for yes seven days at least you can also take these lemons way longer you can age them up to a month sometimes longer all right moving on arguably one of the most untraditional albeit best carnitas i've ever made in my life first you'll need the most beautiful four pound or 1.8 kilo bone this pork Boston butt. Can we just take a second to admire this, by the way? Wow. Anyway, slice that into one inch thick slices. Season each piece generously with salt to taste. You're gonna need a cinnamon stick, just one, but it'd be a whole lot cooler if you charred that bad boy with a kitchen torch or an open flame to give it that extra aroma. Pop your pork nice and evenly into a sous vide bag. Add your charred cinnamon stick, one lime sliced into rounds, one bay leaf, one large orange, cut into wedges, any orange you want. You could do blood orange, you could do cara cara, I don't care. 10 whole garlic cloves. Yes, 10, because mama did not raise no bit. Vacuum seal that bad boy up and gently lower into its little hot tub for naughty pieces of pork. At 185 Fahrenheit for 16 hours, we're now at 184 total hours. Now the timing of this next one needs to be done specifically the day before eating. We're talking beans. You'll need one pound or 450 grams of dried pinto beans. Place those in a medium sized bowl and add just enough water to cover them about one inch above the level of your beans. Cover with plastic wrap and allow those to soak overnight for a minimum of 12 hours. We're now sitting at 196 hours, but trust me, we're just getting started. Started. We're nearly ready for cooking day, but first we have to address the sourdough tortilla in the room. Hey, wait a minute. Who let you in here? I told you to stop. Finally, something the OGs of this channel have asked us to show for a while. I know who you are, thank you, and I'd always kiss you goodnight. If you want this to be sourdough, you'll need a sourdough starter that's fully matured for a minimum of 12 hours. So make sure to feed your sourdough starter the day before so it's nice and ready for what's next, the day of cooking. So we now stand already at 208 hours. Hours. Let's go back to our slumbering beans. Drain the water from your pinto beans and transfer them to a large Dutch oven. Cover those with two and a half quarts or two and three quarter liter of fresh water. Bring to a boil over medium high, then reduce the heat to low. Simmer for two hours, adding water as necessary. And once the beans are nice and soft, drain them and leave them to the side. In that same pot, add half a pound or 225 grams of rough chopped bacon. Set to medium, cook stirring often for four to five minutes until the bacon is crisp. 
Then add a mixture of the following. Two jalapenos, sliced. Seeds and all, okay? Don't be a whiny baby, you can handle it. One yellow onion, diced. Five cloves of garlic rough chopped. Add that all to a pot and saute for about two minutes or until fragrant and the onions begin to turn translucent. Add one and a half teaspoons or two grams of ground cumin. Two teaspoons or eight grams of smoked paprika. One tablespoon or 15 grams of light brown sugar. Two chili de arbol. Stir and cook for 20 seconds. Then add your beans. A 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes. One 12 ounce bottle of Modelo dark beer. One tablespoon or four grams of finely chopped fresh oregano and a generous splash of water. Bring to a boil over medium high, then reduce that brother to low and simmer for 15 minutes. Now just remove that from the heat and stir in a third cup or 15 grams of finely chopped cilantro. Beans, done. There's obviously some wait time during that, so while that's going, you can start your rice. You'll need two cups or 380 grams of medium grain rice. Wash your rice. End of story. Add to your rice cooker around equal parts water, two cups or 480 milliliters. Close the lid and turn it on. While that's cooking, add to a small pan a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of vegetable oil and five cloves of garlic, thinly sliced. Turn the heat to medium low and allow that to slowly come up and begin to fry. After about two minutes, remove from the heat. Once your rice is done, season it generously with salted taste. Now add two tablespoons or 30 grams of your garlic oil and your, well, fried garlic, as well as two and a half tablespoons or 28 grams of lime juice and the zest of one lime. Optionally, you can add one tablespoon or 11 grams of preserved lemon peel. Josh, how do you acquire the preserved lemon peel? Oh, I'm so glad you asked, Josh. You just grab a piece of your preserved lemon, you cut the flesh off, and well, finally chop the peel. That's it. Next, our blackened salsa. Here's a little secret to this one. In a large pan, add one cup or 240 milliliters of vegetable oil, three quarter ounce or 18 grams of chili de arbol, and one ounce or 28 grams of guajillo chilies, both of which have been seeded. Heat that over medium for three to four minutes or until fragrant and some dark spots appear. Add 10 cloves of fresh garlic, and here's the kicker, 15 cloves of black. I know. If you were to make this like I do, then you'd make your own black garlic, which takes another 168 hours. But you can easily buy this at the store or online, so I'll let this one slide because I love you. Anyway, one tablespoon or 15 grams of light brown sugar, two tablespoons or 29 grams of vinegar, two teaspoons or four grams of ground cumin. Lightly stir and let that sit, remove from the heat until cool. Then transfer to a blender and blend on high until as smooth as you like. Don't forget to season it taste with salt, and that's your salsa. Moving on to the very important preserved lemon pico. This is why you made the preserved lemons medium-sized bowl, three Roma tomatoes, seeded and diced, half a red onion, very finely diced, one serrano chili, seeded and finely diced, three cloves of garlic grated, three tablespoons or 34 grams of preserved lemon skin, ideally brunoise, or you can dice as finely as you can. The juice of two limes, a little bit of salt to taste, two tablespoons or eight grams of finely chopped cilantro, mix that all together, and well, that's it. It took seven days or 168 hours of lemon prep, but those little pops of flavor will make this an unforgettable pico. To finish our hot sauce requires almost nothing. Your bag of chilies should now be puffed from the fermentation. Cut your bag open, put your chilies in, plus any liquids that were released from the chilies. Obviously, if you brined your chilies, don't add that liquid because it'll be too salty. Follow with two tablespoons or 30 grams of sugar, a third cup or 80 milliliters of white distilled vinegar, salt to taste, and optionally half a teaspoon or 0.5 grams of xanthan gum, which just prevents it from separating. You can also add garlic if you want that flavor, but honestly, this hot sauce is simple because it's incredible in its pure natural state. Finally, back to our sourdough tortillas. Medium-sized bowl. Add one and a half cups or 225 grams of flour, one and a half teaspoons or nine grams of fine sea salt, half a cup or 120 milliliters of warm water, a third cup or 86 grams of fully matured sourdough starter. Mix it all together until you get a rough dough and then knead for three to five minutes or until you get a smooth, supple dough. This can be made without the sourdough starter, but then it wouldn't be a sourdough tortilla. Anyway, cover that and let it rest for 30 minutes. Then separate into five to six pieces, roll into light balls, and working with one of your balls at a time, nice, roll into 11 to 12 inch tortillas. Begin heating a 12 inch cast iron skillet over medium high until hotter than a quarter left on a beach chair in the sun. One at a time, add a tortilla and cook for 15 to 30 seconds or until it begins to puff and lightly char. Flip and cook for 15 to 30 more seconds. I mean, it should look like a tortilla, kind of like this. Then just repeat with all of your tortillas. Now, for a very special moment, remove your pork from the sous vide, pop the bag open, and just take a moment and enjoy the lusciousness, the greatness of this art. It's not just meat, it's a fine poem. So yeah, roughly shred your pork with its own fat, spread it onto a foil lined baking sheet, drizzle the whole thing with some of its own fat and juices from the bag, and pop into an oven set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for eight to 10 minutes or until crispy, but still juicy and fatty. Don't leave it in there too long or it will dry out. Pay close attention. We just want little crispy bits here and there. For an assembly that took a grand total of 212 hours, tortilla down, followed by a light smearing of your blackened salsa, your beautiful fried garlic citrus rice, the most tender of carnitas, preserved lemon pico, borracho beans, freshly grated Monterey Jack cheese or whatever cheese you like, some hot sauce to your heart's desire. It's not that spicy. You can handle it. And carefully wrap it up nicely into a 
beautiful burrito, run your knife through the center to cut it open, and let's find out if this is worth it. Probably one of the longest burritos I can imagine, and we're here. I have an assessment. Obviously the flavors are amazing, but they're what you would expect. It's not like some alien flavor you've never had before, but that's not what I'm experiencing that's different about this. It is how consistent every single thing is. It just is perfect. The texture of the meat, zero dryness. It's perfectly moist, it melts in your mouth in a way that you just cannot get from a traditional carnitas, I'm sorry. Tortilla's got way more depth to it because it's fresh. The preserved lemon adds this like freshness you would never find in any other burrito anywhere in the world. You get little pops of it here and there. Where you're chewing like, oh, this is a really good burrito. Oh, it's a really good burrito. And then bam, citrus, deep inside of your uh, your mouth. Should I turn your camera off? Turn it off. I could go on and on about this burrito. If this was the last burrito on earth, this is what I would eat. But you could still have a delicious burrito without putting in all these hours, but you'll never have any other experience like this. So was it worth it? Yes, it's worth it, but I don't think any of you are gonna do this. But if you do make this, please tag me, DM me on Instagram, post it in the comments, put it on the Reddit or in the Discord. The Discord's in the description. This is a lot of commitment and it's well worth it in my opinion. The biggest benefit is that you learn a million other things, but you wanna know what else is a huge benefit? B-roll.